and we have to remember this forever, is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now let's pick few functions. Give me any quadratic function. And give me a rational function. And also another function that is radical. Can anyone give us any of these functions? A quadratic, a rational function, as well as a radical function. So we can determine the difference quotient and simplify it fully. For the quadratic, do x squared plus 4. OK, plus 4x minus 3. Good, awesome. For the rational, can anyone give us a rational function? That's good, very good. Anyone? I refuse to believe that no one knows or remembers any rational function. Who, who gave three, me the... Two, like uh, three divided by x minus four. Awesome, excellent. It's a ratio of two polynomials, and it has to have x in the denominator. Brilliant. Who was that? Samuel. Samuel, very good. And who gave me the quadratic function, please, one more time? Sloan. Sloan, very good. Good. And a radical function. Can anyone give us a radical function? You could do f of x equals... 4 minus x with the square root symbol. 4 minus x, excellent, with a square root on top of it. Brilliant. I saw that, Nathan. OK. Perfect. So let's start with the quadratic function. So the purpose right now is to determine and simplify fully the difference quotient. OK. So that's we're going to start with the quadratic function. So let's take a look, and I'm going to copy the difference quotient one more time here. So first of all, how do I read this function? This is extremely important. This is a reminder. Here's how I read it. Let me spice it up a little bit. I'm going to put a minus in front here. OK, so this is how I read the function. What does this tell me? It's a pattern. It says the function of whatever equals the opposite of whatever squared plus 4 times whatever minus 3. So can anyone now tell us which piece of these? I see three pieces. I see piece number 1, I see piece number 2, and I see piece number 3. Which of these three we do not have? H. That's a tiny little thing. H is really nothing. There is nothing I can do to it, and it's tiny, a tiny value. Nobody cares about it. So see, that's, that's why I have my props here. Good. Anyone else? Who was that? Thank you for your answer. That was Kita. Kita. Very good. Thank you. Don't be afraid to be wrong. You have no idea how many times I was wrong. So from 1 and 2, which one we have and which one we don't? We don't have 1. Absolutely. This is the only one we do not have. We do not have. This one we have. It's right here. So this, is, this little age, nobody cares. Uh, this is given. The only one that I don't have is this. And remember how we do this. How do I determine this? This says, according to the pattern, the negative of x plus h, and then 4x plus h, and f of x plus h. That's exactly what it says.
I just have to stop for a second. So uh, the last student who came in did not come in with uh, the name I have on the roster. So I will remove you and please come in with the name I have on the roster, please. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I had an incident, so sorry. I had an incident and I have to request that, so sorry. So, all I had to do is just say that this is f of x plus h equals negative x plus h squared plus four parentheses x plus h and minus three. Parentheses are absolutely mandatory. If I only have three, then I don't need parentheses, but this is not what I have. I have x plus h. Now, based on what we discussed last time, how many terms do I get? And if anyone can give us this. So minus the negative sign stays outside. And now can and anyone? X squared plus 2x, h plus x, h squared. Very good. Thank you, Yulia. Yes? And, and then it's going to be plus 4x plus 4h minus 3. Excellent. Only now, by the order of operations, I have to square first and then I have to distribute. Do not distribute and then square. So negative x squared minus 2x h minus h squared plus 4x plus 4h and minus 3. And now I can say finally I have all three pieces. Only now I will put them together and continue. Before we do that, I would like us to uh, mention or write two different notes. Note one on the difference quotient. All terms without age must simplify in the numerator. So let's see if that happens. And then while we are going to write note two. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to replace f of x plus h by this. Negative x squared minus 2x h minus h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 3. I reach this point where I have the opposite of the function. The opposite of the function requires that we distribute negative 1 to all three terms, not just the first one. So positive, negative, positive. So plus x squared minus 4x and plus 3. All terms without h must simplify in the numerator. If that's not the case, I messed up. Something is terribly wrong. So let's... Now we can remove x, x squared. The negative x squared with a positive x squared. Yes, very good. And then the same with 4x. With a negative 4x. Yes, perfect. The same with the 3. Negative 3 with a positive 3. So the first note was fulfilled. Don't do anything just yet. Note 2. On the difference quotient. Let me move this out of the way. Here's a note 2 age from the denominator must simplify must simplify okay let's see so I'm gonna put a circle next to or around the equal symbol meaning I'm continuing here so look for the circle where I continue I see one I see two, I see three terms. All of them have something in common. What do they have in common? H. Yes, we have to pull it out. And then it's going to be negative 2x. Negative 2x. And then negative just h. Perfect. Plus four. That's it. H from the denominator must simplify. Here it is. I simplify only factors. 
simplify only factors, not terms. So the final simplified form is negative 2x minus h plus 4. And you can say, what is this? What are you telling me here? I am telling you here that, and I have to dig up my shredded, almost shredded uh, notes. I'm telling you this, that this expression for the function we picked, you picked. I helped a little bit. So this expression for the function we picked is this. This will give us almost, not exactly, the instantaneous rate of change of this function for any x. And I cannot stop there under certain conditions. You will see the conditions in the next chapter. OK? Good, so this goes back into the recycle bin. Now we are moving on to our second function, which is 3 over x minus 1. So now we have f of x equals 3 over x minus 1. Let's stop for a second and ask you, let me ask you, do we have questions here? Anyone? OK, perfect. So again, I have the difference quotient, which is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Of course, you're going to say again, yes, these two are carved in stone. No one can do anything to this. So you have to work on that. But this time, it's easier. Again, remember how we read this function. So this function really means this. What is the pattern? f of whatever you want is 3 over that whatever minus 1. Since we're going to continue talking today about the domain, can anyone tell us which x value is not going to be acceptable for this function? And you can say, yes. So why didn't I ask it here? So which, which x value will not be accepted here? Is yeah. there, there is no value that I, it, it cannot be accepted here. Give me any x, I'll give you y. So polynomial functions have domain and range, all real numbers. OK, now here we know that the denominator, the denominator x minus 1 cannot be 0. We move negative 1 to the other side. Remember, when I move a term from one side to the other, I only change its sign. So why do we state this condition? Anyone remembers how do we call? Because the denominator cannot be 0. Yes. Condition. Yes. A number divided by 0 is undefined. This is a fancy way of saying it does not exist. That's all it means. Good. So back to our difference quotient. So I'm going to make this time a little triangle. I'm going to jump over all this and continue here. f of x plus h. Can anyone give us f of x plus h? Anyone who I haven't heard from today? Like Brianna, like Ben, like Destiny, Cameron, anyone? Levi, Sean, anyone? Is it 3 um, over x plus h minus 1? Brilliant. That's all I need you to say. Minus, now I copy the function. Awesome. Who was that? Sierra? OK. Very good. Thank you. Divided by h. Perfect. Good. How do we proceed? What is our next step? I'm looking at, uh, I have 14 minutes. I have to stop uh, the video after roughly 20 minutes, so I can upload them later. So what we need to do next? Anyone? Can flip it? No, not yet. Not yet. We need the least common denominator. Can anyone give us the least common denominator? So we need the least common denominator. So we just need to multiply the first 
one, the first part is x minus 1, and then the second one, x plus h minus 1? You are perfectly clear and correct, but I need to write the least common denominator first. You are way ahead, which is awesome. You are correct in everything you said. But I need to, to write the least common denominator first so I don't forget. Because if I forget to write the least common denominator, the whole thing collapses. So it's so we just need to multiply the first one and the we second We never one. note, never expand factors in the denominator. Why? We want them factored so we can simplify. If we expand them, then we have to factor them again. Never. We never expand factors in the denominator. It's a waste of time and it's wrong. So can anyone give us the least common denominator so we can write it? Is it just x minus 1? The least common denominator. Let's, let's uh, work on this. If I have 1 half minus 1 third, what would be the least common denominator? Is it 2? Is it just 3? What is it? Ah, it is 6 because these two have no common factors. 2 and 3 have no common factors, so it would be the product of the two because they don't have anything in common. So if the least common denominator is 6, then as uh, Yulia said, well, you need to multiply the top of this by 3 because 2 times 3 is 6, and the top of this by 2 because 2 times 3 is 6. So then you have 3 minus 2, and the answer is 1 6. The same thing here. Same idea. x plus h is alone as one factor, x minus 1 is alone as one factor, they have no common factors. So therefore, so, so perfect, what do, I, what do I write in here? Uh, x plus h minus 1, it's the first parenthesis, and then the second one is That's it, one. it doesn't matter in any order you like. It doesn't matter, exactly. That's what I have to write. And then, as Yulia said, this was multiplied by x minus 1, so I have to do the same thing to the top. This, yes, awesome. Three. x plus h minus 1. Perfect. So now let's see what we have here at the top. 3x three, three x. Three x. Three. Yes. 3x minus 3. Careful now, we are distributing negative 3 to 1, 2, 3 terms. Anyone would like to help? It would be minus 3x. Awesome. Minus h plus 3. You mean minus 3h? I got 3h. plus 3. Awesome. Awesome. Coming back, who was that? Sorry. Uh, Levi. Levi, thank you so much. Perfect. So, note one. All terms without h must simplify in the numerator. Okay, so let's see. Otherwise, we are not on the right track. Okay? We made a terrible mistake if that does not happen. Okay, you know I'm lazy. I don't like to write again. So I'm going to use a square now and continue here jumping over all this. So I see the 3x with a negative 3x, and I see the positive 3 with a negative 3. So note number one. Yes. Okay. Good. So then the numerator now is negative 3h over x plus h minus 1, x minus 1, Everything divided by age, but age is the same with age over 1. Perfect. What happens now? Any suggestions, any ideas? We factor um, the x plus h minus 1 and the x minus 1? They are factored, and we never expand them. So don't even look here. Oh, okay. okay. See, that's why I have all these props and my rocks and my little things so I can cover everything I want. 
So, what do I do? How do I divide two fractions? Multiply by the denominator. By the multiplicative inverse of the denominator. So I have negative 3h over x plus h minus 1 and x minus 1 multiplied by 1 over h. Okay, note 2 is coming up, note 2 is coming up. h from the denominator must simplify. If it doesn't, then I'm in big trouble. Does it? Of course it does. I can simplify only factors. A factor of h from the, the top with a factor of h from the denominator. So the final answer is this. What is this? Almost. Almost. Not exactly the instantaneous rate of change of this function. Finally, we'll repeat the process for the square root of 4 minus x. Any questions? Any questions for